Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar, American Consumer Sentiment on Generative AI and E-Commerce. I'm Mike De La Cruz, President and Chief Strategy Officer at iAdvise. We're a conversational commerce pioneer and the leader in trusted generative AI for e-commerce. On a virtual stage with me is Thierry Lalonde, Managing Director, Customer Experience and Digital at Ipsos, Hello. and Sean Ponser, Operations Manager, Customer Service Manager at GetFPV. Here's what you can expect from us over this webinar. Uh, first is to be able to discover what consumers actually want and expect from their online experience vis-a-vis -vis generative AI. Second, hear from a pioneer that's GetFPV on their experience implementing generative AI for their customer experience. And three, pick up some tips and tricks and some actionable insights to help you with your transformation journey to make an impact on your customers and your business. Also feel free to get into the chat, ask your questions. Uh, we'll be answering them as we go. And we'll also have some time for uh, some of the questions at the end of the meeting. Let me start by setting the scene for why we did the survey. Generative AI is transforming the e-commerce experience into a much more personalized and one-on-one -on -one, uh, version of what it is today. A researcher Gartner predicts that 80% of companies of brands are going to be implementing generative AI and adopting it in the next uh, three years. And so what we've done is really uh, looked at, you know, our point of view is to help answer the question of how do I start, where do I start, and really should be starting with the consumer, the shopper. You know, the consumer has certain expectations and has and many of them have already adopted and heard about and read about generative AI. And so we're really going to get into that uh, with Thierry and Ipsos. And without much further ado, I want Thierry to show us those results of what consumers are saying. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, it's a pleasure to be there. I hope my uh, French accent won't disturb uh, you guys. So I will do my best today. Um, well, generative AI is a massive phenomenon this, this year. And uh, what was interesting in this uh, survey that we did in September, over 2,000 American people from 18 years old to 60, is to understand what are their habits in terms of e-commerce and uh, what they think will change with generative AI. So four steps in the survey. The first step uh, will be, well, the place of e-commerce in their shopping experience basically uh, then uh, what kind of uh, communication channel they use to communicate with the brand and uh, which one are preferred and you will see you've got difference between what they use and what they prefer uh, their opinion uh, on of chatbot uh, from a gener generation preceding generative ai augmented chatbot and their perception of what could be the contribution of uh, generative AI on their future online purchasing experience using chatbot and messaging. So let's go with the current state of the e-commerce. E-commerce is representing 15% of uh, the entire retail business in, uh, in, the, in the US. And uh, what we see on the chart is that e-commerce is massively in the habits of, uh, of uh, American people. You've got 73% of uh, all American people who are buying online weekly or several times a month. And you've got most, more than 90% of all Americans that are buying very, very regularly. So at least once a, once a month, once a week. Why they do that? First, for conveniency and practicability, okay? What do we mean by that? It means that we can order and deliver directly at home. It saves me time uh, compared to uh, retail sh uh, shopping, and it's massively the first reason why you buy online. Then, of course, you've got the pricing. Pricing because it's cheaper, and pricing because you can compare that easily. And are they satisfied with their current e-commerce experience? Well, the vast majority, 93%, are somewhat satisfied or very satisfied. How, however, only 55% of them say that they are very satisfied, so which leave brand a big opportunity for improvement of their e-commerce experience. So when 
we asked them about the obstacles and uh, why sometimes they choose not to buy online. Uh, the first reason, and it's striking, it's the lack of uh, information for 50% of the case. Of, okay, a lack of information because of, uh, uh, of a lack of uh, specific and detailed uh, information of, uh, on a specific product and uh, uh, lack of the ability of assessing the product quality of this, uh, of this online. Then, the shopping and delivery cost, uh, of course, and uh, the long delivery time, you don't get that immediately. So let's, let's go on step two. Uh, what are the communication channels that the shoppers and consumers use when they interact online? When you buy a product or service online, how do you usually contact the brand you're shopping with? And it's all the online chat and messaging tools uh, that are used in most of the case. Okay, so uh, in 90% of the case, uh, American people have used uh, online chat, uh, messaging, SMS, uh, um, social network, etc., etc. Then come the email and all the digital forms that you can, uh, uh, th then you can fill into the website. And the third one is by is by phone. But what is interesting is to see the difference because what they have used in the past and what what they prefer. Okay, 54% of them prefer all the messaging, chatbot, and uh, SMS uh, in interaction tool. Remember, it's 90% of we, uh, who use that, but only 54% who prefer uh, this channel. And you've got 20% who still prefer the tele uh, uh, phone calls, and 24% uh, still prefer the email. So you see a gap between what they have used in the past and what they prefer. It means that you've got a gap between the uh, let's say, the brand promise and the real experience they live, they live. So there is a gap and there is a place for improvement for the brand in terms of interaction in improving this online experience. This gap of preference and usage, uh, what's, what's the takeaway there, Thierry? Well, the takeaway take when you see this, this difference between what they use and what they prefer, it means room for improvement. And that's a good news when we, uh, when we see the generative AI come to, to this world. It means that generative AI can be used to improve all these interactive uh, chatbots and messaging that, in some cases, do not answer to the client's need. So what do, you, what do they think about classic chatbots? So what, what I mean by classic chatbot is chatbot without the new technology of generative AI. So first, they see clearly for 79% of them, the benefits of chat, a chatbot. And it's higher when we see a younger generation and genera generation Z, for example, they see what chatbot can bring in terms of real time, 24-7, and in terms of interactivity. But you've got 34% of respondents who have used a chatbot and were disappointed by that. So didn't find the right answer to go through the purchasing experience. And in, on the other end, when the chatbot gave the right answer, 65% of the Americans say they have purchased online following an effective response from a chatbot. So it means uh, when chatbot succeed in giving and bringing the good answer, it has a very good value to transform the sale. Harry, there's a, there's a huge swing here in terms of performance and impact. Uh, very good chatbot, very good outcomes, bad chatbot, very bad outcomes. Yeah, exactly. So now we have arrived at the heart of the questions for all e-commerce uh, retailers. Um, are consumers ready for generative AI? And what should retailers uh, do to improve the uh, e-commerce overall experience? But let's first remember that generative AI is a very new phenomena, basically. And it's quite, it, it's quite, it creates both feelings. Uh, when, we, when we, Ipsos, have done a, a massive survey in 50 countries, you've got uh, this mixed feeling. First, more than 50% of the overall planet basically is excited by generative AI and what, 
uh, could it bring to the overall experience. But on the other hand, more than 50% of them are quite frightened and uh, nervous about the impact on their life on generative, on generative AI. So all of, um, uh, all the challenge for e-commerce brand is to find the right use case that will bring value because it's not the shoppers who will find this link between technology and use case to simplify their life. So we need to do that to do that for them. So we ask them the question in, in which area basically you think in which development uh, of generative AI uh, would interest you in improving your own uh, shopping experience. So it won't surprise you to, to see that the best use case is to obtain a detailed information. It's the, it's the last one, you know, 74% of um, American shoppers say they are very interested by uh, having generative AI who push better and detailed inform information. And I told you, excitement and nervousness. So the three areas of nervousness on generative AI are first the quality of answers. Quality of answers means is it something detailed enough that gives me enough information to choose the right product for me? Then protection of the data, 31. So will my data and my personal data will be safe and not shared with anyone when I dialogue with uh, an e-commerce site and a generative AI chatbot? And the third one is about reliability of the answer, meaning that is this answer is a benefit for me, is a recommendation for me, or just uh, something that will be positive for the company. So it needs to be balanced, of course. Quality, protection, reliability. Yeah, perfect. You know, those are legitimate concerns. Uh, we'll talk about it more in terms of what it really means to uh, provide trusted generative AI. Uh, but having said that, you know, many thanks, uh, Thierry, for really great insights. Um, I thought, you know, maybe it'd be helpful because there's so much data uh, to provide your top three takeaways for the audience. Thank you very much, uh, Mike. Three takeaway to conclude. First, the lack of detail and qualitative information on a product is the first reason why an American shopper won't purchase a product, 50%. Second, 54% of Americans prefer messaging, chatbot, etc. to ask e-commerce customer service questions. Very good. And then 74% of Americans are interested in getting more Accurate product information thanks to generative AI. Dessert, dessert point, answer the first one. Thanks, Thierry, for all those insights. Um, if you didn't take notes, don't worry. Um, the iAdvise team is adding the link to the report in the chat. And uh, so you can get it there even if you didn't take all of that in. Uh, lots of information. Thank you, Thierry. What I'd like to do now is just share a little bit of our perspective and point of view as I advise on what's happening uh, here in the market and the impact of generative AI on e-commerce. You know, uh, we all know this, uh, generative AI burst onto the scene into public consciousness in the last year, and it's been more like a tsunami in terms of the wave of adoption and how much we've all been thinking about how this can transform society. I uh, just try to try to bring it down to earth a bit. I wanted to talk about, you know, what we're seeing for generative AI in e-commerce. What does it mean for e-commerce? We see generative AI as really redefining the experience. Um, it's going to go from e-commerce being an impersonal experience that's really about uh, consumers or shoppers wading through a growing set of information on products and product details and everything else online uh, to be able to shop to one that is hyper personalized and one on one uh, with the shopper. And I think that's a, a tremendous opportunity uh, that's going to be created by and accelerated by generative AI. What we see is that uh, as a conversational commerce pioneer is that generative AI is going to 
uh, come on top of several waves of adoption of technology in the e-commerce industry. Uh, first is the adoption of uh, messaging technology. 85% of consumers, um, you know, with the ubiquity of smartphones, um, really want to be messaging with brands. Uh, the second is the wave of technology around how to actually manage those conversations. Um, we've seen all of our clients achieve uh, multiples on conversion rates when customers actually get assistance that they need. Um, it's supported by, by the way, by the data that Thierry just showed in terms of chatbots being able to answer or not answer questions. When they're able to answer questions, there's a very high likelihood of conversion and uh, saving a, a customer from abandoning. And then, of course, generative AI and AI in general has come in as a third wave of technology to help uh, scale this idea of one to one commerce, conversational commerce. Um, you know, not only is it impossible to uh, support uh, the, all of these conversations and messaging, it's impossible for a single human being or a pre-programmed system to actually know everything about uh, every product, every detail, every use case at all times and uh, keep up with it. So I think there's a tremendous opportunity for generative AI to actually bring about the reality of one-on-one uh, -on -one commerce uh, with the personalization. What we hear, though, from uh, e-commerce brands is that they want a trusted generative AI uh, for their business. You know, they, they, there's a need to leverage the technology for conversions. Um, it's a leverage the technology for customer support, leverage it to provide and differentiate, provide a great experience and differentiate, uh, but they want it to be trusted. And what that means is that uh, they're really looking for generative AI that is going to be compliant, uh, it's going to be controllable, and it's going to be connected to their systems, right? Um, connect it to my data uh, about my products, connect it to uh, my information, not what's out on the public internet. Um, not only comply with legislation, but comply with my brand policies, with my tone of voice, with how I want to engage with the customer and give me the tools to be able to monitor it and improve it over time so that it's not a black box, it's something that I can control. And that's what we heard uh, again and again. And so we've set out, as I advise, to work with those customers to provide that to the marketplace. And it's deployed primarily as co-pilots. So co-pilots, uh, first for agents, where agents are able to serve customers uh, very efficiently with high levels of productivity. And secondly, uh, for really for the shoppers themselves, you know, having a, a shopping assistant that's operating, uh, you know, with them as they traverse all of the information on the site uh, to help them get what they want, get what they need and be able to uh, move forward to a successful purchase and repurchase. Okay, so co-pilot for agents and co-pilot for shoppers. And what we do is we support three use cases, primary use cases. Now it's supported, this, these use cases we've been working on with uh, our first customers, uh, first wave of customers in e-commerce. Um, it's validated by the data we just saw today. Uh, what we're doing here is we wanna have the best e-commerce uh, co-pilots you know, on generative AI. And they have to do three things really well. Provide relevant product information, especially uh, around um, growing, you know, uh, uh, product information details, but also on application and use. Uh, provide some product recommendations uh, to help shoppers uh, make decisions, you know, move forward with the purchase. And then also uh, the FAQs, the, the pre-sales and post-sales questions that may not have anything to do with the product itself, might have to do with uh, a delivery, um, uh, return policies and the like. Uh, but are also a very important part of the pre-sales and post-sales experience. And so what we've done is really looked at trusted generative AI e-commerce, what the requirements of uh, companies are and brands are. And we're working with about 70 companies that are in active implementations uh, and deployments of this and be able to take it you know, to their end consumers. Um, that's where GetFPB comes in. They're one of these pioneers 
I want to introduce, uh, get FPB and Sean here briefly so that we could hear from them and their experience. Get FPB is a leading online retailer for first person view drones. And Sean is operations manager and customer service manager at Get FPV. I think, Sean, you've been there over 10 years. You've seen the evolution of this space and the growth of the company. And now we're excited about what's coming next. So maybe to get us started, tell us about yourself and um, your charter and what's top of mind for you. Yeah. Thank you, Mike, for uh, having me here today. Um, it's, it's a real honor um, to be uh, joining you. Um, on this uh, uh, amazing uh, endeavor. Um, yeah, here at GetFPV, we uh, strive and are, do our best to be the largest uh, drone and FPV company out on the market. Um, we are uh, working out of uh, Sarasota, Florida. Um, we we uh, ship all over the world. Uh, and so having, uh, I advise, um, with the team, it's it's a useful and phenomenal tool that um, you'll see as we um, you know, get further into this, how important it has been bringing you guys on board and um, having AI come on now, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a game changer. Yeah, Sean, uh, we've been working together for, uh, for many years, but your AI generative AI journey uh, just started. Uh, tell us uh, why why you started and uh, what what you were trying to do with it. Yeah. So with with uh, having AI, um, it's important for us as a company to stay on the cutting edge of technology. And uh, going over from the beginning, ten years ago, um, we started with just phones and email, and uh, that's evolved over time. And um, with today's technology, um, I see there's a great move into people needing a much quicker answer, and that's through texting. And um, as we're seeing, more and more people are doing all their purchasing on mobile devices. So um, by giving them a, a way to text in and get their answer, uh, first through an expert, but then uh, also uh, with AI now, it's it's proven to give them a much quicker uh, response and um, right to the point of what they were needing at that moment. Yeah, you know, Sean, it's only in September uh, you made a decision to uh, take the conversational experience to the next level with AI and Gen AI. Yeah. Um, you know, for some of the audience that's thinking this could be, um, this seems daunting. Uh, tell us about your deployment, uh, uh, what what it took. It was a very quick process. Um, first, we worked with your team in uh, implementing our product feed, uh, everything on the website, um, so that the AI bot would be able to take that content to provide the necessary um, question answers. Um, for the consumer, um, within after providing our uh, feed, it was approximately about uh, ten days later that it was in place, and a week after that, we were actually live on the site. Wow! Wow! Uh, what What are some of the benefits to the consumer? Uh, so, for the consumer, uh, what they're getting is a, like I said earlier, a quick response. Um, to uh, the questions that they're looking for. Um, with us here at GetFPV and drones, it's a very fast moving um, business and industry. So getting the latest question with the latest answer, with the latest product that's out on the market today, um, you know, if you're, if you're relying on just a human being they're they're going to give you an opinion of what they know but the ai bot is able to give you all of the content based on what you as a um, website are providing to the consumer it's able to answer their question with the latest and greatest answer yeah yeah uh, perfect um, very difficult to do with uh, the growing complexity of products and all the detail uh, exactly with, uh, with, with products. Um, Sean, what about, uh, that's a, a view into some of the initial results. Uh, tell us just overall, uh, mm -hmm. what are some of the initial results that you found with the project? 
Yeah, so just uh, amazingly in that in a in a very short period of time, uh, we've been able able to see seventy three percent of of the um, answers uh, answered by the uh, I advise copilot, and um, they're also with an increase of a ninety percent CSTAT response. So you know, um, just an amazing result. Uh, with the experts, uh, it was it's an amazing answer. But with the AI bot, it is uh, it's a new uh, you know. There's no turning back now. Yeah. Wow. Um, super successful uh, initial results at the beginning of the journey. Uh, tell us about uh, what you plan next. What are you thinking about for what's next? Yeah. So uh, we're looking at looking to turn it on to our frequently asked question page um, so that, you know, consumers, but just by us updating the frequently asked question page, the bot is going to be able to respond to the latest questions that people might have uh, about products or about our business. Um, and um, we also are looking at um, implementing this to recommended products um, that we are um, trying to promote and uh get out there and um yeah it's uh it's uh you know we're we're trying to get it throughout the rest of the website um so that um the experience with the consumer is the very best that they can get wow amazing amazing and exciting uh sean thanks for that uh thanks for answering and sharing um as much as you can here with the audience um uh, I know that we've been answering questions along the way in the chat, but uh, I think there are a couple that we could take here at the end of the webinar. Um, and uh, I think Thierry, Sean, and myself can, can take some of these. Let's start uh, with the first one I'm looking at here. Uh, it's for Thierry. Did you notice any significant differences uh, with generations, between generations? Uh, in interesting one. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, in every tech revolution, especially if it's related to digital experience, you, you have a, a, a generation adoption gap, basically. And for this one, that's the same, meaning that the young generation adopt this e-commerce and generative AI uh, um, perspective and benefits uh, much better than the others. So if I remember well, um, for example, on e-shopping, you've got 40% of American people who do that week weekly, and it's more than 50 for young adults, uh, 25, 34. And on an adoption of a chatbot, you've got 80% of American people who uh, see benefits in chatbot to improve their, uh, their experience, and there are nearly 100% of young generation who see benefit in chatbot. So you see there is a gap, but it's not a huge one, meaning that uh, uh, e-commerce is a normal habit in, in the American, uh, um, in the America, and uh, using chatbot and generative AI is something completely uh, beneficial for, the, uh, for them if they answer their real question about information, recommendation, and after sales. Right, right. Great, okay, I'll take the next one. It says, uh, can uh, I advise uh, Copilot uh, hallucinate as something that we hear about uh, from other AIs? So, um, you know, generative AI is prone to hallucination. Um, it really has to do with uh, the data that it's trained in, and it could get confused, you know, in terms of the purpose. And so what we've done with trusted generative AI is to reduce or mitigate that. Um, as we've talked about, you know, brands really want their own uh, models, their own AI based on their own data that follows their policies. And then, you know, it's not going to be 100%. So we provide all the tools and the monitoring so that uh, we can continuously update um, and enhance uh, the data provided uh, to reduce those hallucinations and to provide a very high uh, reliability and quality of answer. Okay. So um, another question, probably the last one here. Let me just take a look. Um, this one is for Sean. Uh, how would what would you be? What would be your top three tips for an e-commerce leader 
who wants to launch generative AI? Well, that's a good question. So first, I would ask uh, uh, the owner of the website to put themselves in the consumer's shoes. What is the experience that the consumer is seeing on their site? How long is it taking for them to get an answer through their phones, through their email, um, in their situation regarding their products? So be the consumer. Uh, second one would be take a look at your cart. Are, are people leaving the cart? Are they, are they, do you see them abandoning that cart? Uh, the, co the number of sales you're seeing on your cart totals, are, are they what they have been? Or is there a lack of um, sales dropping because there's less um, people checking out? And then the third, I would say, would be um, questions. That is the consumer getting the best answer they possibly can through their method that their uh, customer service is providing at that time? Oh, Sean, thanks for that so much. Um, I, uh, I hope everybody uh, has a chance to uh, connect with Get the FPB at some point and hear more about this or check out their site. Um, so uh, lots of content already today. Uh, it probably makes sense uh, to pause the conversation now at this point. Uh, we've heard a lot about uh, what consumers want and what they expect and what some of these opportunities are. We've heard from Get FPV on their experience uh, so that hopefully everybody here walks away with some actionable insights on how they can move forward on their journey. Uh, I want to thank um, Sean. I want to thank Thierry uh, for presenting with me. And uh, mostly I want to thank this audience uh, for getting involved, getting engaged in the conversation. We hope to hear from you. Till next time.